Hey there, fellows. Now, I see a lot of you love motorcycles. With the constant requests we get to make a sort of hybrid between a car and a motorcycle. Anyway, so as you requested, today we're going to be conducting a rather interesting experiment. We've got a few sprockets from a motorcycle. We've also got that chain. And now, as for the whole point of the suggestion, the idea was to find a car, remove the prop shaft and connect the gearbox with the rear axle via a chain, one from a motorcycle. At first glance, I'd say that there are no immediately apparent complexities to it, which is always the case when you're at the discussion stage. So we've got ourselves a pair of differentials. They're welded up, so we've got that covered. The sprockets, the chains. And now we need to take these diffs, sprockets and chains, piece everything together, toss that prop shaft into the garbage bin, and go take a spin in this car that's going to be running a chain drive. All right, let's slap all of this together and do some testing. Can you replace a prop shaft with a chain drive mechanism? Translation and voiceover by BMI Russian. Here's where we're at with this, fellows. It's all actually pretty simple. Now, remember I told you we had two differentials? One of them is placed, end to end, attached to the gearbox. It's all looking pretty good. We've connected them via um, a rubber coupling. Here we've got the mounting solution, which is keeping the differential firmly in place. You see, we can't afford for these differentials to be shifting relative to each other. Otherwise, these chains are simply not going to be able to hang on which is why we've hard-mounted them. This one is sitting there nice and tight. Between the flange and the sprocket we have a spacer. So that's there. We've test-fitted the chain. Now I gather you guys have already noticed, yeah? That the system we're running is different from what you'd find on a motorcycle, but we'll get to that. Anyway, so in the back... Back here we've got another div attached to the rear axle. It's also placed end-to-end, -end, with a sprocket bolted to the flange via a spacer. Again, we've mounted these firmly. We just don't have the leeway. We can't have these diffs moving around if we want the chain to stay in place. And there's one more thing to consider. Look here. Luck is definitely on our side, as always. So let's assume we've got everything installed. Wait a second. I should rotate the assembly first. We begin to connect the ends of the chain. And so here's the thing. We did our maths, a bit of test fitting, and everything seemed to be coming together in the best way possible. But in reality, this is what we've run into. Like I said, it's just our luck. So the chain? The ends aren't meeting by about. If you look closely, there's a 10 millimeter gap in this position. But if we were to bring it further apart, like by two links, each one is about 16 mil, let's say we put in an extra 30 mil and see how badly it's sagging. So once we fit everything up, we can't really tension it properly. We have two options. Either one of the diffs. Let's go with this one. We can move it forward or back. 10 mil is less than 30. So we've decided that we'd be better off moving it back by 10 millimeters. Thankfully, we have enough of a gap right here to make that work between the sprocket and the mount. But the more eagle-eyed viewers might have noticed a little something. The sprockets are not mounted like they would be on a motorcycle. There the smaller one is the drive, while the larger one is driven. 
Here it's the other way around. The driven's bracket will be the drive, and vice versa. I really hope that this car is able to... It's set up like a bicycle, but I do hope that, in first gear, it'll be able to move. At a speed of at least 60 k's. Setting off is going to be tough. Then again, it is the winter time. I gather a few clutch kicks will be enough to get the wheels to lose traction. The road surface isn't nearly as grippy as in the summer. I expect that something really interesting might happen. Okay, let's connect them and try this out. We had enough clearance, but the diff looks like we got carried away and moved it a bit too much, making the chain sag slightly. But then again, it's not too bad, it's at a minimum. Right, so you would have just heard me telling you about how we put a big sprocket up front and a smaller one in the back, which gives us a ratio increase like on a bicycle. However, like I said, and you would have noticed that this here diff is mounted end to end with the gearbox, meaning that the diff itself is giving us some reduction. We've got a ratio of about maybe 1 to 4, I'd say. So one revolution of the flange translates to 3.8 revolutions of the output shaft. That's almost 4. Let's bring her down. We have a saying around here. He is never mistaken who never does shit. Alright, let's do this. Nice. This isn't good. Looks like we screwed this up. It feels like I'm trying to set off in fourth. We missed the mark! <laughs> With the ratios. Okay then. Here's the situation, fellas. We were really hoping for this to work. For this placement of the sprockets to work like on a bicycle. But that's not the case. So when you engage first gear and try to set off, it feels as if you're in fourth. Even in reverse, which is an even shorter ratio, it still doesn't want to go anywhere. So let's go ahead and swap the sprockets and carry on testing our chain drive setup. Let's do this. Check out what we've got here, fellas. We had no trouble swapping them. Now the smaller one is placed up front while the bigger one is in the rear. We also did some work on the exhaust. It used to be very noisy. So now I gather it should be eager to move in first. It might even get up to 10 kilometers an hour. Let's go ahead and check to see for ourselves. And we're off. Yeah, it sets off, no problem. That diff gives us a bit of reduction. And the chain is rattling slightly. Why is it doing that? It doesn't seem to be hitting anything. That's second. Oh, it's hitting that angle, okay. And now I put it into third. This thing rips! And I'm not gonna go any further. Wanna know why? If something were to happen, it'd be a long way to push it back. I can't even tell if the wheels are spinning or not. I don't think they are. Third gear. No need to go into reverse. That's fourth. 
Holy cow. Stay with me. Third gear. Now at least. That's fourth. With this much thrust, I take it this car can tow pretty much anything. The rear diff ain't welded. I want it to go sideways there. So now I'm moving in fourth gear. The speedo is reading 60. That's just the gearbox. Spinning at a fast rate. That is where the speed signal is coming from. I'd say we're probably going about 40. Too bad I don't have a fifth gear. It would have been so cool to throw it into fifth. That there was third. Now we need to find reverse. There it is. Yeah, that's just... The wheels are spinning. We've got some wheel spin driving over the snow. Which allows us to happily set off even in fourth if we need to. The reading on the speedometer is pretty optimistic. I'm at 60. And there we are. Here's how it went down. That motorcycle chain in these winter conditions is very much up to the stress put upon it. It doesn't seem to want to evacuate. Though sometimes you do get the feeling... When I wasn't looking at it... A few times when I stepped on the gas, it did feel like there was a bit of slippage. I thought I heard a click. Maybe it was just me, but it could have actually happened. And if so, that means there's not enough tension. Anyway, the car does drive quite nicely. The only issue being that we've got some serious reduction going. Even in fourth gear, the car was easily able to set off on the snow. One tire starts to spin, and off you go. So an additional pair of welded differentials, two sprockets and a chain, were enough to make this work. Wasn't even really that hard. This experiment has been a success, so you may repeat this one. No need to worry. That's all I have for you. Watch us, subscribe, send in those comments and suggestions, give us a big thumbs up. All right, catch you later.